Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video, and in this video I'm going to uh, try the direct landing challenge again. been having fun with that. This will be my seventh attempt, and on the sixth attempt we did have a success. So I'm hoping to be able to repeat that success, but it's worth keeping in mind that even though the scenario is similar, it's not an exact duplicate each time. There, are, there is some variance, and that variance is enough that my uh, rule of 60% uh, that I used last time might not work out. So that's kind of what I want to test. I want to find out, um, you know, what, what based on the new scenario that we're going to get, if that previous thing I did will work out. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. So let me switch camera views here. Let's jump into things. So let's go ahead and view our flight record. So we've made six attempts, one success, and that we had 116 seconds to spare, four crashes, and one suffocation. All right, I'm gonna say we probably have seen the intro enough at this point, seeing that this is the seventh attempt. So let's go ahead and skip the intro and jump right into things. All right, hard bang. Now I did figure out in video six, or attempt six, the reason that uh, the interplanetary was taking so long to settle was because I never hit kill rotate. Um, I haven't actually posted the sixth video yet, so I'm sure people will probably notice that as well and comment. But uh, but anyway, that was the reason. So we're going to open stuff up, and we want to jump right into um, interplanetary and get things rolling because the clock is ticking. So let's go with our base approach, and let's try our, our method again. So Brighton Beach will be our target. We're going to go the old reentry program gives us more information and we're going to set our altitude at zero again we know that's wrong and I should have actually checked when I was successful on my last attempt to see what the altitude is try to remember to do that this time if we succeed anticipation angle last time was negative 0.4 I felt like that was still a bit much so I'm going to try negative 0.35 this time and let me go ahead and log that really quick. I've expanded my spreadsheet a little bit. So we'll talk more about that when it matters. But for now, I'm just putting in the anticipation angle. And again, I'm trying to work quickly here just to, um, you know, make sure the time is good. All right, so we, we on this particular dice roll, we got a little bit more time. Uh, again, 1,800 seconds is a half hour. Uh, 2400 seconds is 40 minutes, 3000 seconds is uh, 50 minutes. So since we got a couple more minutes, maybe we can get away with 3000 seconds this time. But let's compare. So 3000 gave me 431. Okay, and actually less time is better in this case. That's interesting. So 28, 27, but only to a point. So it looks like 20, it looks like 2800 was probably the best. I'm not going to mess with it beyond that because we want to get this burn going. And let me just quickly check to make sure I did everything. Anticipation angle. All right. So again, we did 2800. So let's get that burn going. And let's log our number so we don't forget. And again, I'll talk more about how I've reformatted this in a moment. All right, let's uh, switch over to vertical speed while we're doing that burn and get our vertical speed set to something that we might like to have once we actually get to a point where we're ready to engage the autopilot. All right, let's check map and see how we did. I'm just about ready to give up on trying to get this perfectly centered, but let's try again. So that looks pretty well centered. So zoom, 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 it's a bit off, I can tell. Go up. Zoom, 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 zoom. Yeah, it's probably probably about as good as I can hope for. All right, so that burn has us pretty much passing straight over the base. Translation. Um, it it probably doesn't do me any good to even try to align it now because, you know, we're still six thousand meters up, six thousand kilometers up. But let's just see. And usually I find that pressing two on the numeric keypad, and again, that was the right way to go. And it looks like now we're bang on straight across the middle, but again, we're far enough up that this will probably change a little bit. All right, part of our checklist procedure here should include setting up our comm nav. And I've done this enough now, I know it's 116, I wanna say 30. 
and I know it's wait one sixteen thirty. I think we will verify that, and I think it's one. I think it's one thirty two twenty, but I'm not completely confident in that. So let's go ahead and check Control I, Object Base, and let's select Brighton Beach right there. So 116.30, 132.20. All right, I got it. All right, and also because we don't get that information for a while, let's go ahead and use our GPS VTOL, go to memory, and we can just get Brighton Beach, which is really convenient. And all right, we don't need to worry about that now. So next thing that we want to do, so we've programmed in our burn. Um, and we've executed our burn, so we're on track. So let's go ahead and get into the retrograde position. And we'll go ahead and bring up our generic camera and look out the rear view mirror. <clears throat> and we will see the moon come into uh, the camera here in a moment. And I believe that's the little horseshoe for Brighton Beach right there. So just give that a little bit of time warp to let the autopilot settle turn off kill rotate and now let's go ahead and warp time forward and we'll get down to a thousand kilometers and then we'll come out of time warp and think for a second but we'll probably keep doing that 400 kilometer mark because that seems like a pretty good time to set up our our guesstimate so about All right, back to real time just to give us a second to think. And yeah, as you can see, you know, from one flight to the next, you know, our numbers are different, our time is different, everything's different. Um, so it's not the case that once you solve the problem of landing that you can just repeat it every time. It's uh, There's not a, an, a massive amount of variance, but there is enough variance that you can't just do the exact same thing every flight. Take a sip of water while I'm thinking here. Okay, so we are 900 kilometers up. We are about 260 kilometers from the base. All right, let's go ahead and go retrograde just to get that settled into position again. A little bit of time warp to speed that up. Come out of time warp. Let's go ahead and bring burn time calculator up now. And we have the main engine selected. All right, so I think we're ready to go ahead and proceed to our 400 kilometer mark. So let's go ahead and do that. Carefully, we'll come out of time warp around 550. No, about 450, we'll come out of time warp. <clears throat> so coming out of time warp, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just pause right at 400. So I can get my first number, which is going to be my vertical speed. So 487, so you can see how fast that goes by. So pause. So we're really close to 400 kilometers. All right, so the first number we're going to put, put in is 2715. So let me go ahead and switch camera views here. So what I've done is I've expanded the spreadsheet out, and I've got like a 70% mark, a 60% mark, and a 50% mark. So, uh, well, okay, so... Let me explain what that means with regards to the last flight, and then we'll put in the new information for the new flight. So in the last flight, we have this range, and what I'm calling range is that is simply the difference between this number and this number. In fact, if you look at the equation, it's just cell E8 minus D8 gives us this range. So then what this is doing is it's taking my, my range value, multiplying it by 70%, so 70% of that number plus my my plus this number gives me um, you know a, a starting burn point of about 239 kilometers. And then the last flight I used 60%. This was what I actually did. But I just set these three up, you know, 70%, 60%, and 50% because I feel like you know we're going to be around that part. And you know, maybe we could even do like a 40%. And then I have, you know, approximate started burn at. And then for the last one, it was it was just, you know, H8. I used this value here. And then on the previous flights, you know, I didn't have any of that set up. So I just did my burn approximately at that point. For the fifth flight, I did my burn approximately at that point for the fourth flight. 
and then I did my burn at approximately that point for the third flight. And this was the outcome of each flight. And then I didn't really log anything for the first two flights because they were just huge fails. Okay, so that is what we have there. Now, now that that's explained, let's go ahead and go back to our main view. And I'm going to have to unpause and go to 0 0.1. So unpause 0 0.1. I'm going to put in uh, 2715, enter, and pause. So according to burn time calculator, using the full power of the main engines, we need 140,944 meters. So let's go ahead and put that into our our system here. And again, this this we may have just the last landing may have just been pure dumb luck. I'm not going to pretend like like what I, like I'm not going to pretend that this spreadsheet is anything to go by. But that's the purpose of doing another flight. I feel like if I do you know five or six flights and I get a success each time. By using this method then we know we are we have a, a semi-valid system all right let me go ahead and switch back over here now and we need to put in uh, that number but that's really close so it's not going to change much but let's go ahead and put it in anyway so unpause we're at 0 0.1 and let's just go ahead and yeah we'll put it in exactly how it is that's going to say let's round it up a bit but and back to pause and actually, I think this is one of the reasons we may have gotten fairly lucky on the last flight is just simply because these two numbers are so close together, or rather, let me say, because they were so close together. And on this flight, again, they're really close. In fact, they're much closer on this flight than they were the last one. So this method may work again on this flight, not because it's a good method, but because those two values are so close together. I think the more spread we have between our vertical speed and our ground speed, the more likely this spreadsheet system is to fail. But based on our ground speed, we need 159,637 meters. So now I'm just going to copy everything here down. So now our range, so on our last flight, our range was, you know, 59,739. And on this one, it's only 18,693. So 70 percent is uh, let me see I might have a formula thing here I'm gonna have to fix yeah I okay I see what I did so I don't want I don't want that one to be uh, all right I'm gonna have to fix this hang on I I accidentally locked that onto d8 and I shouldn't have done that so let me actually just fix that really quick bear with me mistake locking those so let's copy that down and let's copy that down but they're still the same so what am I doing wrong here let me just quickly check oh I see I see I see okay so the one that I want to lock is not it's this one because the percentage I want to be consistent so I just locked in the wrong cell my bad bear with me while I take care of that and now I can copy all these down and we should be good all right, there we go. So, based on what we did last time, this is when we would begin our burn. 176, 177 kilometers. If we wanted to go, if we wanted to be a bit more um, conservative, we could use the 70% figure and go for about 183 kilometers. If we wanted to be a bit less conservative, we could maybe try 170 kilometers, 171 kilometers. But again, this range isn't huge. I think, you know, what we'll find on other flights is that there will be a pretty big difference between 70%, 60%, and 50%, and that difference is going to be the difference between hitting the ground and dying or stopping in time to, uh, you know, to get your vertical speed to zero. Um, so again, there's not a big difference here, so it probably doesn't matter, but we'll go ahead and split the difference and do the same thing we did last time and go with the 60% figure, and it may not work. We'll see. So let's go ahead and so we're going to do our burn at 177 kilometers basically. We'll call it just 177. We'll round up. All right, let's let's switch camera views here. So now that all have all of that has been explained, let's go ahead and unpause, go back to real time. And again, we're going to begin our burn at 177 kilometers using the full power of the main engines. Let's go ahead and warp time forward to get to that point and come out of time warp now and just be patient make sure that's on it is 
and everything should be good. So 177 kilometers. So just a couple more seconds until we begin our burn. And burning. Okay, so I feel okay now with uh, warping time forward to get through this part. So there's Brighton Beach. So we're 40 kilometers. Now, I think the big problem here is we're going to be way too high. So I'm almost tempted to kill the burn and let us get down a bit lower. But let's... Yeah, I'm really tempted to do that. I'm super duper tempted to do that because look at that Delta V. Okay, I don't think this one's going to work. So we know that this uh, method I've been using is garbage. Yeah, we're not going to land. There's no way. Not a chance. But let's just see what we can do. So we kill the engine there. And let's just go ahead and let the vessel settle into position. We're still 14 kilometers up. We only have 480 Delta V left. And I just don't think that's going to work. Hopefully I'm wrong, but I doubt it. There's our 10 minute mark. And let's go ahead and bring up VOR VTOL. For some reason, I don't get the information I want until I go off frequency and back on. It's a bit annoying. So we're going to go down here. We're going to go off frequency, back on. And now we have it. So we can bring up VOR VTOL, navigate over. And yeah, I don't see this happening, but let's uh, let's just see what happens. So we're kind of going in the direction that we need to be going, but and we're only four kilometers out, so that's good that we didn't end up, you know, way off. But I just feel like yeah, this is gonna be tricky. Translation. We might make it though, but I feel like we if we are gonna make it, we need to be moving towards the base a bit faster. But I think, I think we started the burn too soon for that particular one. But here's the issue. Our vertical speed's increasing, and if it gets above that number, obviously there's no chance. So I don't know if I should speed up more in that direction or not. Let me actually use... Uh, crap, I didn't mean to do that. Translation. Let me actually use translation, because I have some translation left over. And speaking of translation, I'm going to go ahead and hold down the translation to prevent myself from falling too terribly fast. The uh, translation's barely making a difference, of course, but all of this fuel I can use saves this fuel. Alright, I feel I'm getting a bit worried about my you vertical speed, so I'm going to go ahead and zero out. Or get close to zero. We don't have to get all the way to zero. I'm going to say that's good enough, and I'm going to Oh man, I should have done it sooner. Climbing, I just wasted fuel. And we don't have fuel to waste. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a bit more forward translation to get over top of the base sooner. So, man, 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 I am so mad at myself right now. I climbed so much extra. 214 left. Seven minutes remaining. I'm not worried about time at this point. Go ahead and put down the landing gear. Let's be optimistic. Pretend like that we have a snowball's chance here. Gear down. And I'm going to go ahead and use uh, translation thrusters to slow down my descent. Again, just because we have that fuel. So we're moving towards the center of the pad at 25 meters a second. And, you know, that down translations having barely any impact of course but it is it's it's not zero it's not a zero effect so it's doing something so we might actually be okay here as long as again as long as our vertical speed does not exceed that number then we should be maybe okay uh, bear in mind we also have to take out our forward velocity at some point so we'll start thinking about that here soon getting a little panicky on my descent 500, 400, 300. Okay, take out all that. Start taking out the forward velocity. This is going to be a squeaker if we do get it. All right, I have to do this because I'm freaking out. We're going to be coming in on fumes here. So let me increase the descent.
Alright, translation. It's not missed pad. I think we actually got it. 40. 200 meters. 30. Yeah, we have five minutes 20. to spare. Rope translation. Alright, I think we did it again. That was much, much closer. I think we might actually run out of fuel right above the pad. Like the Mars thing. Wow. Okay, everything has to be off, 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 brakes. Attitude off. We did it again. Alright, so my method isn't complete garbage, but it needs refinement. There's clearly... I mean, look at that Delta V remaining. One Delta V remaining in the main tank. Uh, okay, so... So I think what I'm going to take away from that one is that when the numbers are really, really close together like they were, we need to maybe go closer to that 70%, maybe even up to 80%. Than, than that 60% because I think that was just cutting it way too close but we did it we landed so again taking a look and review our little uh, method here so in this method we did we did H9 and we had a success so awesome all right so that's going to wrap it up for this video because we are over that 20 minute mark and I want to give a thanks to Dimitri again for putting this together I'm having a lot of fun trying to figure this out and I know that the people have been watching the couple of attempts that I've uploaded so far have been enjoying it as well. So thanks everyone for watching. Give a big thumbs up for that success. And I'll see you in the next video.